Hi everyone, it's Natasha and I want to talk about um, or I want to share my experience on what I didn't know in what you need when you are bringing home a newborn from the hospital. What you really need at the house and you are actually not going to waste your money on. Um, and this is from, you know, I spoke to our pediatrician, what her thoughts were, um, we, when we did a, um, a meet and greet to pick our pediatrician, we did that and, you know, ask a lot of questions. So you really do need a crib. The reason you need a crib, number one, is because you want, you want your little one, your newborn to slowly get used to sleeping in a crib in their room. Um, obviously it's your choice if you want to keep your baby in your own room. Just so you know, the transition from that to their room might be challenging at some point. It's not, I mean, every, every child is going to be different. Everyone's going to be different, but more so or not, it will be harder to transition if they're not used to that. Excuse me, because it's it's foreign, it's just different, and they're you know they'll get very scared. So a crib is very important. Get a crib mattress. I would advise to get a crib mattress that is waterproof because that would make your life so easy. There's always going to be an accident that happened with me. Um, either you're changing them in the crib or somewhere else. An accident's about to happen or they could just spill from their diaper. It just happens. Or they vomit or they spit up and it's everywhere and so your mattress is gonna be ruined. Getting a waterproof mattress, all you gotta do is clean the mattress on the top, like wipe it down, get it to dry or wipe it dry and then put a different um, bed sheet on. Um, also make sure you get multiple bed sheets and I think it's already standard that crib, crib sheets are all um, the fitted one and it's it's kind of tight because you know you don't want to you don't want to suffocate your baby um, make sure you get multiple crib sheets because in my experience this happened this really happened in oh, the span of one day my baby went through three bed sheets yep three so, um, I ran out and he had to sleep in the play yard or his chair, which is the gliding chair. Next, it would, um, you need a changing table. You really do because, um, I, there are times when I, I would change my baby on a different surface and it, it does hurt your back a lot. If you're on a, a changing table, you're just upright and you're standing up and upright standing up. Oh, I'm sorry. So it doesn't really hurt your back when you're doing that. And um, initially, you know, when I first started to, because I've never had a baby before. I've never changed a diaper before my babies before. So before, I mean, when you're changing your baby and you're a new parent, um, a lot of, I mean, I was frazzled because they would cry so much when they're exposed, you know, when they're cold, when they're being changed, when they're wet, when they're dirty. So when you hear your baby cry, it's just, it just, it just like your heart just feels so like, it just, I don't know. It's just somewhat painful. I mean, now I'm a little used to it now, but in the beginning it was painful to hear because you know, it, it, it just sounds like there's in so much pain and there's, you're trying to speed up as much as you can because you know you're the reason why they're in pain and why they're uncomfortable and why they're crying. But anyway, yeah, changing table. Um, make sure you get a good changing table mattress. And again, get a, get a waterproof one and get multiple sheets. It's, um, I'm, I'm going to link down below the one that I even bought for the sheets. Um, I bought them on Amazon and I love them and they're really cheap and they're cheap in price, but the, the sheets themselves are beautiful. I mean, I, I enjoyed them. Um, they don't look cheap to me and they don't feel cheap to me. They look really good. I mean, I, I, 
I bought what I bought and they're just plain and everything, but you know, you could pick whatever you want. Cause I'm not saying you gotta pick what I got, okay? But um, anyway, next you need to get diapers. You need to get the newborn diaper size and the number one. So in our shower, someone graciously, generously got us like the super pack, which I would advise for you to get that too. Get the, get the super pack because you'll go through those fast. Um, the newborns, I believe, is from like weight up to eight pounds. And the number ones are from... No, up to, the newborns I think are up to 10 pounds. Is it? Or is it up to eight? The number one is from eight to 14. If you're, if you're having a baby that is bigger than 14, then um, maybe get a number two. I don't know, but it's somewhat rare to have a 14 pound baby it can happen i'm pretty sure um but i would advise to just get um probably if just for you to be comfortable because this is for anybody that's going to be in labor even if you're doing the vaginal birth or or even if you're doing the vaginal birth or maybe you're doing a c-section in the first few weeks you're going to be in a lot of pain. You're going to be uncomfortable. You might not want to leave the house. You want to rest as much as possible. You want to make sure you're stocked up on diapers. And try to keep the receipt. If the you got the wrong size, let's just say your baby never used the newborn size. So you just skip from that and use the number one and return the newborn. Um... You're gonna know what the newborn sizes would be, I would think, because in the hospital, they give you the newborn size. Um, I mean, if your baby is huge, like it won't fit in the newborn size, then I would think they would give you the number one size. So you already kind of know which one you would need. And, you know, a family member could always go back to the store and return that for you while you're still in the hospital. But, you know, you can, you can wait. You can wait, there's no rush for that. And you can just exchange it for the right size. But I would suggest to get two to three boxes of each sizes because it you'll go through fast, number one. Number two, you're gonna be tired. You're gonna be like uncomfortable leaving. I mean, you have to at certain times, but it's a hassle. It's, it's a hassle. So if you wanna just relax at home, heal, you know, sleep, bond with your baby, then get a few boxes also um prepare yourself for the baby wipes either you're making it pre-made or either you're buying it pre-made or store-bought or you're gonna make yourself so make sure you stock up on those and also you go through baby wipes fast it's like the diaper too so if you want get um I would suggest to kind of try which one would fit with your baby and maybe probably research which one you like and um, maybe get like a few of those like the small ones just to see I mean yeah just just not the big box yet or maybe you could also get like a small dispenser and you can get one to two boxes of different kinds and you can always return them. You know, you exchange it for the ones that you like the best. Um, this is if you're going to be breast pumping. If you're not, just wait for my next one. So if you're going to be pumping, I would suggest, number one, you get your breast pump before, um, before you get into labor. Funny story. My breast pump, we got it after I went to labor. It was like four days after. Because we planned on the day my baby was born that we were going to go get my breast pump. Because 
he wasn't due for another week. So, yeah, another week. So, make sure maybe get everything settled like a month before you're due. You know, just in case. When you are breast pumping, um, aside from getting your breast pump, I would suggest you get um, at least one extra set of accessories if you can afford it, if you want to, because you also have to think when you're done with this, you're done with this. Um, get maybe a few, a few sets. If you can afford one or two or three, get them because from my experience, when you're washing these and sterilizing this, you have to, I mean these, you have to air dry them because I tried wiping them with cloth and then I noticed on my baby's lip was like a fuzz because I was, I was um, cloth drying some of them and it was, it went on his mouth because I have to supplement him with formula. Um, and the the nipple on the bottle it had like a little fuzz on it from the cloth so i i haven't used that ever since i've i've been air drying them ever since so that's why i advise to get at least one extra set if you if you want and can afford get like two or three extra sets it just depends on you but just so you know you have to you know wash these sterilize these so uh, like frequently so get out how many you want also before you purchase your pump check with your insurance and your state law because um sometimes your insurance might not cover it from where um you get your insurance from but in your state they will cover it because you you're a resident in that state and um if they I think you have to be a minimum one year resident or you paid state taxes. If your insurance does just say, oh, this is not covered in your insurance, make sure your, your state does. It's a state law because if it does, all you gotta do is get um, a letter from the lactation office or, no, 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 you get it from your doctor, your OBGYN. That's where we get the doctor um, or the prescription from. We handed it over to the preferred medical supply company and um, then we got our pump. Now when you get it through that way, their pricing are really more expensive than when you go to Target or Walmart or eBay. However, your insurance covered it so you're not the one paying for it. Um, next would be baby clothes. You need... Um, you really do need like a like a, a few number of them because your babies could have an accident and you're gonna run out of clothes like clean clothes. But don't don't get too many though because they grow really fast. And I already have some of my baby's clothes that it doesn't even fit him anymore. So it it, it was slightly loose when he was first born, and then now. He doesn't fit in uh, a few of them and I had to, to put them away in the closet. Make sure you get a few. And again, if you're, you know, when you're buying these, if you're buying these brand new, make sure you keep the tags. If you're buying these like um, at a resale shop, I don't know what their policy would be. So you check that first. And maybe when you go to the resale shop, maybe get like the bigger sizes. But in like a regular store, like uh, Babies R Us or any kind of baby store, get newborns, zero to three, um, and three to six sizes. And each, it's, and baby clothes, um, I'm sorry, something's like itching me in the back. And baby clothes have kind of like a similar, similar thing with adult clothes. Each brand is going to have a different cut of what a size would be. So um, try to just kind of, if you find like a newborn and they all kind of have whatever is similar, that would be your guide that that is a newborn size, you know, 
you get maybe five to seven on each size and keep the receipts if you don't use them let's just say your baby is born doesn't fit in the newborn size of zero to three and you skip to three to six then you can always return them make sure you keep the tags on you keep the receipts all that stuff um in the beginning you're not really gonna you're not really going to use lotion in the first two weeks of your baby's life um that's what the nurse told me they have a layer on their skin that is protecting them so you shouldn't put anything on except for maybe a diaper rash ointment but that's it you, you shouldn't put any kind of um, lotion or cream on them because of the film or the layer that they have on for two weeks and you um because of their belly button you shouldn't be bathing them you should kind of like do a, like a sponge bath on them so make sure you also have shampoo and then of course you're gonna have lotion after um i have the aveno baby and i will link that down i mean everything i'm gonna say i'm gonna link that down below on where to find them and you're gonna have your choices so the aveno i've been using that the um what is it called shampoo and body wash or body something and the lotion and um, no negative issues, no side effects, no rashes, no nothing with my baby. So that's good. Um, make sure you have a diaper rash cream. In the hospital, they gave us the A and D ointment, which works really great. And we also have the Destin, I think that's what it is, um, that was given to us at our baby shower. I use the Destin when we're on the go because it is in a tube. The A and D, um, my husband bought the biggest tub and it's like $10.99 or something. But obviously I'm not going to bring it on the go with me. Um, probably at a certain point if I go through the Destin, which maybe I will, maybe I won't. Um, I will probably just a scoop scoop the ointment and put it in a small container so I could bring it with me in my diaper bag next make sure you have and you bring and make sure you bring this with you at the hospital a nipple cream or a nipple butter this is very important because if I when we were at our breastfeeding class I asked them is there something or someone asked them like because I remember I asked them something about nipple stuff. If you're going to breastfeed and your nipples are going to be raw, I asked, I asked them, is there something you can put on there? Oh, no. Someone else asked them in the class. I asked them about the nipple pads. So they said, no, you don't need anything. I mean, there are items on the market like nipple cream, nipple, nipple butter, nipple, whatever it is, conditioner. However... You don't really need that. You just put breast milk on it and it should be fine. So, you know, I trusted their information and I did all that. And um, when we were at the hospital, my, um, I was very determined to be able to breastfeed my baby and get my milk coming out. I used the, ho the hospital breast, breast pump and it made my nipples really raw. I was very sore and um, I wasn't able to feed my baby after that, like right away. So because of that, I think if I did do that, I would have been able to get my baby right on me and maybe, I mean, who knows what's going to happen, but I'm not going to, I'm not even going to go there because I would just feel really sad and depressed about it. But anyway, um, I do... I do regret not getting a nipple cream and nipple butter because of that fact. Because I did want to, you know, make sure my baby has contact with me, and that's what you're supposed to do to promote um, your milk, com your milk supply coming in. And I wasn't able to do that because I was told you don't need that. So I had to research when I had the time, which was only a few weeks ago to see and a lot of nipple butters and nipple creams have beeswax in there and I'm allergic to beeswax. 
so there is only this one brand it's like earth mama and i will again i will link down below and i will make a review of that that doesn't have that it has the um it doesn't have that kind of wax it has the other wax and it's not an allergen i've never had a problem with it and i've used that wax a lot of times um and i use that so much i think if i had that from day one my nipples wouldn't be as as painful as it has been um ever since i've had that and i use that all the time constantly now my nipples aren't really as as in pain as they used to be prior for me using that and in the beginning of me using that because you have to you have to consider the fact that it's not going to be like magical like first time you use it everything's completely gone it's not going to be like that because that would be kind of dangerous for you your milk and your baby anyway um baby cotton swab i didn't realize to buy this buy these i just i just didn't think about it well my baby has like bats and escape from time to time and he gets congested from it so i have to you know put the baby cotton swab in there and clean it out so he can breathe right and every time i bathe him you know i clean his ears make sure it's clean um make sure you also get a baby tub with a newborn insert this is very important and it's very very useful i am so happy that we were able to secure that before I went into labor and it doesn't matter what, what brand you get you know all that stuff just make sure it has an insert in it that part is really helpful that's what we have um, and the ones that is just a tub without the insert in it it might be kind of hard because I you know when you have a newborn they're kind of like doing this you know like this because they can't hold their head yet um, so you do need the insert you're gonna need a diaper bag I just use my Louis Vuitton no way it works perfectly for me and I did kind of plan already that maybe I'll use that I didn't really think that I will enjoy it that way I thought I was gonna use my Chelsea Louis Vuitton bag because it was it's huge and for me, from from my experience now, you don't really need a lot. You need a few diapers. If you really want to be prepared, you want to bring like at least five um, baby wipes, the diaper cream, extra clothes, changing pad, um, maybe like a disinfectant 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 wipe just to wipe it down. If, I mean, that's just for me. You know, I like I like being thorough. I wipe that down and put the, um, what is that called? The travel version of the changing pad. So it's kind of like this thick. It's kind of like this thick, yeah. It just, it just kind of feels like it's a towel, but it's, it's a little bit better, you know. The, the one part of it is um, waterproof. And the other part of it is, is bamboo. So if your little one does an accident on it, it won't just penetrate and go through wherever you are. So if you're at someone's sofa or somewhere, I don't know where it would be, or your car, it just won't penetrate through. It would be, you know, held securely there. Um, and that would be it, I think. Yeah, so you, for me, I don't think I need a lot. I did have to sacrifice and get some of my stuff out of my bag that I really, really wasn't essential. And I just, you know, wanted to make sure if I do need it, I had it there. So it's fine. Um, if I do feel like I do need a bigger bag and I am thinking of getting a Speedy 35 or 40 in Benjier, of course, but I'm not really sure because I am really eyeing on the Chanel MM. And I don't know, I just, I'm in this like postpartum brain, very fresh. That sometimes I'm not kidding. Sometimes I'll think of something like right now, right? Like I'm, I'm let's just say this object, I'm thinking of 
putting this object in the next room. Five, and then they put it down. Five seconds later, I will stand up and go in the other room and I'll forget why I was there and I won't even bring this item. It's that crazy. So, yeah, I just, I don't know. I have, I'm, I'm more focused on my baby and making sure he is fed and clean and happy and stuff than getting a diaper bag. Um, I don't really leave the house a lot, you know, lately because I breastfeed and you have like a short window in which you breastfeed and then you breastfeed again. And the last time I tried to breastfeed him in my car, we were still in the nipple shield scenario and we had a problem. He would not latch on. He just didn't, he just didn't latch on. So I had to drive home him crying in the back seat in his car seat, just crying, crying, crying until we get home and then they breastfed him. So, so far, um, the only places he's gone to has been probably less than 10 miles away, like the doctor's office, the hospital, um, Target, grocery stores, Costco, you know, just, I don't even think we bought him a baby Saras. So next, um, you need a baby brush. Now this is, you really do need a, a nice baby brush. It has to be super soft. I would advise not to get the plastic ones, but get like the so really super soft ones that like, I think they, but just non-plastic. I don't know. They're different materials for it, but just non-plastic. Get nail clippers. Their nails grow so fast and very sharp. Um, not only are they gonna cut you, I've had cuts on my on the top of my breast, like right here, because my little one will grab onto anything, you know, because they can they could see like shadows and shapes and stuff, but they can't really see everything correctly yet. And so they touch something, they want to grab it, and so. You need to, I, I need to trim it every time and I'm so scared because it's so small and he's moving his hand all the time. And, um, I, the, the biggest part is like, I don't even care if I get scratched. It's more like he scratch, he, he scratches his face when he touches his face. I don't like that. I don't like him getting scratches. And of course, last, last but not the least, lost. Like, I don't even know what accent that would be lost. Last would be the nail file. Because after you trim their nails, it's still gonna be it's still gonna be sharp. It's actually gonna be more. It's actually gonna be sharper than before you trim them. So you do need a baby nail file. And again, everything's gonna be linked down below in the in the um, description box. I don't even know the words right now. I just I was thinking about it like it's in my head, but it's just not coming out. Like I know what I want to say. It's just stuck up there. Um, the other day, I I remember I told my husband, it's right on, it was, okay, I don't even remember which one, but what I remember was, I either meant the table or the chair, and I said the other one. So if I meant to say it's on the table, I said it's on the chair, or if I meant to say it's, it, please grab the chair, I said, please grab the table. And he kind of knew what I meant, thankfully. But it's just the pregnancy brain, transition to postpartum brain, which I'm taking the fish oil every day. And you know, I mean, I can really tell that it does help a lot. Cause I mean, I did have, I did have a harder time before, like way harder than I do have now in articulating, believe it or not. However, um, ever since I started taking the fish oil, it has improved. I'm not completely 100% there yet, but hopefully it will be faster due to the fish oil supplement because of the omega-3s. And when I told my doctor that, they said when I was pregnant, um, one of my levels was up, so that was supposed to help anyway. So when, I, when they asked me what supplements I'm taking, I told them everything and they're like, okay, everything seems good and seems safe for you to be while you're breastfeeding. So anyway, that is my advice for what you um, what you really need to be prepared at your home.
Oh, I actually forgot one thing. Um, you need a swing rocker or glider. This is very important. This will keep you sane. Um, the motion of it, either one of the three or you want to get all three, it doesn't matter. Okay. You don't even have to get the most expensive one. You just want to get something that will work. Um, get a reliable item because, okay, if you get the cheapest one and it's going to work for three months, that's junk anyway. So, I mean, obviously don't get like a, like a bad, um, item. Just make sure that price doesn't really, doesn't really matter. So you need something that will just has a, some kind of motion. You need the vibration, you need some kind of motion. So what I have, it's the Fisher Price something glider. It will go up and down and it will just move like this. It just glides, that's why it's called a glider. And it has one, one level of vibration setting. Um, I am, well, my husband kind of suggested it to get a different one because he's kind of wanting to, he's kind of liking like a heavier motion, like a swing possibly. Plus, I think the swings are, um, the swing that we were looking at were bigger when we were buying the, when we bought the glider. This glider is kind of smaller and he has grown. My baby has just grown longer, um, which is great, you know. That's what you want to do. You want them to grow. So, um, he's gonna outgrow that pretty soon. I'm probably thinking like a few months. Um, but he was super tiny compared to now, I think when I look at the pictures, but if I don't look at the pictures, he just looks like himself. And, but I do notice the weight though, because my arms, it does feel like I need to work out again because my arms like it hurts when I'm carrying him sometimes because <laughs> some a lot of times lately he doesn't want to um, leave my side he just wants to be held and he's he likes that so um I've noticed it when I do that like he's getting heavier and heavier so to get yourself sane so you could eat you could eat sleep nap go to the bathroom shower um Anything to be a little bit separated with him and keep your sanity intact. You really need to get either a swing, a rocker, or a glider. Um, try to look at your local, um, because your local um, stores and also like resale stores, they might sell those if you're on a tight budget. If not, you can always get the newer unused one, like brand new, a Baby Star Us. Um, Target sells them. I don't know if Walmart does, but you can always go online. Um, Amazon sells them too. I was looking at them actually today and last night when I was feeding my little one. Um, so, I, I mean, I'm going to give you a link down below when I'm talking about and, you know, so you can browse through there and, and get your stuff there. But actually, I should have put that at the top of the list. That is very important. Like, if they're not comfortable and not feeling secure and sleeping in their own bed like the crib, that is the best thing to go because it, they just feel like there's always motion. So it's they're being reminded of when they were in utero and you were walking around or moving around and it just makes them feel like familiar and safe. So again, it's either a swing, a rocker or a glider. Which one you want to get? If you're in a super tight budget, I think the rockers are the cheapest ones. If you have a little bit more money, um, I think the swings and the gliders are priced higher than the rockers. There are two or two in ones. That's a rocker and a swing. At the same time, there's also like a glider. Yeah, just a glide. No, I think the glider is as is, but they have like different settings and different motions to that. Um, I did just see that that was from Graco, I think, that um, it has different, different movements. 
I don't know. I, I, I watched it yesterday, so I don't know. It was one of the things that maybe that's what we're going to get. Um, if you want to get a play yard for... We have multiple levels in our home. So the crib is upstairs. The play yard is downstairs. Um, so just so he get he or she, like your baby gets used to sleeping also in a, in a flat surface. Because if they fall asleep or take a nap on the swing or the rocker or the glider, it's not really flat. It is inclined, you know. So you also want them to get used to sleeping flat. So when they when you put them in their crib, they will sleep um, easier and they will sleep long hours. So that's oh, it's getting dark now. So um, that's what I have experienced that I needed or must haves before you bring a newborn in. If not, you're gonna be like overwhelmed. You're already gonna be overwhelmed to bring your baby home anyway. You're gonna wanna rip your hair out if you don't have all of these things, okay? So um, I hope I was able to help at least one person out there. And thank you so much for stopping by watching my video. And I hope you hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to leave your comments down below. I love reading all of them. Thank you guys. Have a wonderful day. Bye.